What is up, everyone? It's Thomas with Real Broker here in St. Augustine, Florida, coming at you live every Wednesday at 8 p.m., going over the market stats, the news you need to know about if you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing here in Northeastern Florida. And we're doing a Q&A. So if you're watching it live, you're watching it, a replay, replay, go ahead and drop in the comments below any questions you have. I, I will answer live. And if, if it's not live, I'll go back to the comments and I'll try to answer them the best that I can. So make sure you fire off those comments. It also helps me pushes this information out to more people here for you guys every Wednesday at 8. So if you do have any questions, don't be shy. As we like to start them all off, um, I love to know where people are watching from. So if you're watching here locally, love to get our locals chimed in here and also giving some feedback on the things that I'm covering. That That's really valuable one for, for me. So I, I hear your feedback on what the locals think, but also for anyone else that's looking to move here. So um, if you are watching from somewhere else, please let us know where you're watching from. Leave me a note in the comments and uh, let me know if you're thinking about moving to St. Augustine or maybe you're, you know, just just curious, see what's going on. So uh, we'll start out as we always do and we'll go out to the market stats and just give me one second. I'll pull that up here for you. I hope you guys had a good holiday week. I guess we're still technically in the holiday week. I seem to be the only person that's working, um, which is fine. It's totally fine. I don't mind it. Uh, you know, I had about a week off. Um, I was up north with some some friends and family. Fortunately, had a relative pass away, which is not ideal, but um, definitely put some things in perspective for your life, right? Now, life is short. We need to live it. We need to do what we want to do. But let's go ahead and take a quick oh, They changed everything around in here. I forgot about that. Let's take a look here. So we're at 7,200 active listings. This is for the entire area of northeastern Florida. And I mean, if you're if you're counting Jacksonville, um, Duval County, let's say Duval County, Nassau County, St. John's County, Clay County, you're probably looking at around 2 million people. Um, and we have 7,200 homes available for that. So if you're thinking about, you know, is that a buyer's market or a seller's market right now, we're pretty much in a balanced market. It's definitely a little bit more towards sellers. Just like if you had a 50, 50 split, it's probably 60% on the seller side. Um, but uh, that means that you can negotiate a little bit, which is great. Um, on average, we're seeing across new construction and resales, average uh, concession from a seller is going to be about seven thousand. No, sorry, twelve thousand um, dollars on resales. It's going to be about nine thousand dollars on new construction. Uh, I think it's going to be about fifteen thousand uh, dollars. So that means fifteen thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars, nine thousand dollars that you keep in your pocket that you can negotiate in closing costs and a rate buy down that can take that interest rate from six and a half percent down to five and a half percent to a more comfortable level for the life of the loan. So I think that's really important. Um, let me see here. Well, they changed everything here. This is not ideal. Here we go. All right, let's take a look at the past week. Now, of course, it is the holiday week. So I don't imagine that um, things have really changed too much. Um, as we can see, there's pretty much a big nothing for this past week. Um, now, this is also a new system, so this doesn't seem right to me. Um, 11 new listings, 156 pending, 148 expired, and we had no closings. That doesn't seem right to me. I don't think this is updated information here, guys. So I know that our MLS is changing some things, um, but that, that doesn't seem right to me. I mean, um, I, mean I, I know myself, like last week, I had two closings on Friday. So, yeah, so that obviously is not right. Um, unless I'm the only person doing business in Northeastern Florida, which I doubt, right? That's probably not, not the only thing. Um, but um, either way, guys, uh, we'll head into the important news stories here. Uh, I don't have too much for you. You know, the, the, there weren't too many news stories, but I actually think the ones that we do have here today are actually pretty good and that you do need to know about these if you are living here in the area or if you're considering moving. Um, so let's hop right into it. I'm not going to waste anyone's time tonight. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, fire them off below. Any of these news stories, I'm going to put, of course, I got to edit the document, but I'll put them in the links below uh, once everything is finished. So you can check out these things. Um, so this is something that obviously is a big deal. And, and if you haven't noticed, uh, interest rates have gone down pretty significantly. They've gone down nine weeks in a row, um, all the way from 8%. Now we're at 6.5%. So as fast as they went up, they seem to be coming down in the same respect. And that's because uh, the Fed essentially hinted like, hey, we're going to do some rate cuts next year. And though interest rates aren't exactly tied to the federal funds rate, they are more closely tied to the 10 year treasury. Um, so if you look at that, they typically have a spread of about 1.7 percent. I think right now we're about two and a half percent. So as the 10 year treasury starts to go down, we should see interest rates continue to go down as well. 
So what's the magic number for sellers that are sitting on a three and 4% interest rate for them to start making a move? Well, no one has a crystal ball, of course. And this is, what is this? Um, this is just speculation, but essentially uh, what we're seeing and why we have an inventory problem across the nation is because a lot of people got the house that they wanted at a three and 4% interest rate at the price that they wanted. So they're not going anywhere and they don't want to because they compare it, especially when you compare a 3% rate to an 8% rate, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't give you the warm and fuzzies about moving. Uh, so they're choosing to not move. So what this person here is saying is that the magic number for fixed mortgage rates that would unfreeze the housing market, a price bringing together willing buyers and sellers, a market clearing price, by my, by my lights, that number has a 5% handle. This is a very, my, by my lights, I've never, never actually heard that. Um, but that is definitely something that, you know, we, we're all uh, definitely unaware of, right? Um, monthly mortgage payments should be no more than 30% of a buyer's income, right? And as of right now, I think it says it in here, but I can't find it. But as of right now, I think we're seeing it at about 41% of someone's total income. So housing taking up almost half, the government's taking the other half, right, uh, of, of the total monthly income for a lot of people, which is not good, right? And a lot of that has to do with the price, right? Prices are a lot more than they were three years ago, five years ago. In our area here, we're up 60% from five years ago, right? Now, I believe we were severely undervalued um, prior to the pandemic, um, but we have you know, that, that large price increase in such a short amount of time has definitely priced people out of the market and also made people kind of weary. Then we have interest rates going from three and a half percent to 8% within a year's time. Uh, that makes a big difference in your monthly payment. And now we're seeing them go back down. And now they say, you know, and initially you're going to see there's, there's all these different theories on what's happening, right? So um, I'm going to put out a prediction video. I've been a little busy because of the death of my family. Um, but I will be putting out a prediction video of what I think. And just, a, it's honestly just a culmination of me looking at all these different things and what I think is potentially going to happen, what might happen. But a lot of people are thinking that will be at six and a half by the end of 2024. Well, we're at like 6.67 right now. So if we're at six and a half by the end of 2024, well, then we really haven't budged at all. We've also seen people saying that we'll get down to, you know, the high fours by the end of 2024 and 2025. I don't know if that'll happen. There's really no way to predict what's going to happen. And Jerome Powell even said it. He's like, hey, if we see inflation ticking back up, we're not messing, we, we're not messing with the interest rate. We're not going to make any cuts, right? So, and that affects the market. And that affects how people buy the 10-year treasury. So all this stuff is pretty much with a grain of salt. All we can do is, is just tell you what I'm seeing here and we'll just go from there. Um, but let's head on to the next news story here, guys. Um, I think if interest rates get to five and a half percent on that note, um, then we are back in our area here specifically, not nationally. Here specifically in St. John's County in northeastern Florida, then we are back in multiple offer situations. And, and we still have multiple offer situations on homes that are priced well and also uh, beautiful move-in ready homes. That's still happening today, even with 8% interest rates. Um, just recently, uh, I had a buyer who was in a multiple offer situation on a million dollar house um, and the house was on the market for five days. Pretty staggering. And that happened about a month ago now. So um, pretty, pretty amazing um, that that's still happening in today's world, given, given the circumstances, but that's just what it is. St. John's County is a pretty cool place to live. I enjoy it. And I think a lot of people also enjoy it. If we're at six and a half right now, could be a good opportunity to hop in there to still get that incentive but also still get the house that you want. We have a little bit more inventory. If we go into next year and we start seeing things go to five and a half, turn the jets back on, you know? And I don't want that. I don't want that to happen. I want a normal market. I don't want to do the craziness. I want everyone to be happy with what they're doing. I want people to be comfortable. When we were in the market before when interest rates were three, four percent, you know, people were coming out of pocket twenty, fifty thousand dollars to make to to get into contract to cover appraisal gaps. Um, and that's just not a really good feeling. Yeah, they got the interest rate, right? They got a three and four percent interest rate, but they also came out of pocket, you know, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in order to make the difference between, you know, the multiple offers, you have multiple offers bidding up the price, and then also the, you know, the appraiser saying, hey, the house is worth this. There's no way the bank's giving you a loan on this. So they, the, the buyer had to bridge that gap because the seller was like, well, if you don't want it, I'll give it to this guy. He wants it. He's got the money. So no one wants to go back to that market, at least. I don't, you know, sellers, of course, want to go back to that market, but um, 
you know, who knows? Who knows? If it does get to five and a half, I think we're in a crazy market again. But I, I do also think that that does help sellers like this man was saying, um, or woman, I'm not sure who wrote that article, um, that it does open up some sellers to like, oh, you know what? Maybe I don't like my house. Maybe it's too small. Maybe it's too big. I'm willing to let go of this three, four percent interest rate, four, five and a half percent interest rate, kind of trade it off a little bit. All right. So more national news here, guys. Um, Biden administration wants to build 500,000 starter homes to fix America's affordable housing crisis. But will this be enough? Now, I've seen estimates that say that there's roughly a, a housing shortage of, you know, four million homes. And then I've seen an even more conservative estimate of saying there's a housing shortage of a million and a half homes um, for our entire country. And that's something that we've had problems with for decades and decades. And it hasn't become a key issue up until, of course, it's a problem, right? It's like, uh, you know, they don't put a stoplight up until there's a car accident, right? And we're, we're in the car accident right now. we got high interest rate, we got high prices, and we got high inflation. Leads to an unaffordable housing market and people spending 41% of their income on housing, right? And that's, I mean, even rent, rent is still high, right? And they, they've, you've probably seen the headlines, rents are going down, but not really. Like, okay, they go down like a percent, like that's not that much, right? <laughs> like, it, uh, it, it's funny how everyone everyone um, throws out all these things. Um, but just like this guy said, a perfect storm of inflation, high prices and soaring mortgage rates and low housing supply have caused 2023 to go down as one of the least affordable years for housing in recent history. Now, of course, we all know what next year is, guys. We got, we got an election coming up and we're seeing bills being pushed, right? Specifically targeted at housing, this one, this one in particular, because this is a sticking point for a lot of Americans. They don't have a place to live. They can't afford to buy a house, right? Not saying that Joe, that's Joe, Joe Biden's fault, but he wants to get reelected again, right? So he's going to be pushing these bills. Well, does this have a chance of passing? I don't know. Um, but he also pushed that hedge fund bill as well. I'm not sure if you saw that, but pushed and I covered that two weeks ago. Uh, the hedge fund bill was essentially saying that they want to get hedge funds out of housing. They don't want them buying houses anymore and competing with your everyday American. And they're going to limit hedge funds at um, over, over a portfolio of 75 homes. Now, just speaking on that real quick, I, I think a lot of this is just, it's all political games, right? Um, they, they want to get votes. And will these things actually move forward? Probably not, right? Let's just take this hedge fund thing. Um, hedge fund thing. So people invest in hedge funds, right? So there's portfolios of money where people own, you know, they, they, they own, uh, What's the best way to put this? That they have an investment in this company. So if this company all of a sudden loses a big part of their portfolio, well, then their 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 uh, valuation is going to go down, right? So does it make sense to limit these guys? Because then not only are you going to affect the the cost of what everyday Americans have in equity in their home, right? Because of the housing prices of being where they're at. But then also you're going to affect what they have in their stocks as well, because then they're going to see these stock prices come down because of this limitation on these hedge funds. So will this actually go through or is this a gesture? I don't see this going through because you're going to you're going to mess with too many people's money. Right. And a lot of people that control what's going on here in the country are the older population that have all this money and they don't want anyone to mess with it. And I totally understand that. I don't want anyone messing with my money. My point is, is that. A lot of these things are talked about. None of these things are followed through with. So we'll stay on top of that. I'll of course, look into it more, but it, it'll be interesting if, if something like that gets passed. Here's the other thing. If they say, hey, 75 homes is all these hedge funds can own, what they're going to do is open up another LLC and they'll put 75 homes under that one, 75 homes under this one, this one, this one, this one, so on and so forth, right? These guys are smart. They know how to play the game and that's why they're rich, right? So either way, and by smart, maybe it's cunning. Cunning is the way to go. Either way, let's head on to the next news story, guys. I'd love to hear what you think about that. Um, am I off my rocker? Am I somewhere close? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get to the next news story here. Now, this one is pretty cool, I think. It's, they summarize this, and maybe I'll put a video out on this and my thoughts on all these things. Um, I just read this today. I didn't really do too much um, investigation on this. Let's see. Can I close this thing? Like taking up a third of the screen for your own advertising is ridiculous on a website. Like how, how this is even a thing. Um, either way, uh, here are some of the laws that you need to know about. Persons with disabilities registry. 
introduces the Protect Our Loved Ones Act, authorizes law enforcement to maintain a database named the Persons for Disabilities with Disabilities Registry to address concerns over interactions between police and individuals with disabilities. Ethics requirements for public officials. Local officials are now mandated to disclose their financial dealings. The law has led to a significant wave of resignations across the state, with numerous officials stepping down, especially in the Tampa Bay area. That's pretty interesting, right? You know, I, I we all talk about like all these, all these he, uh, hedge funds and all like these uh, donors to these political parties and how money really moves public opinion and all that kind of stuff and what these politicians do seems to be a, a key point there, right? Why are people leaving? Is it they're looking too much into someone's finances? What's going on? Why 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 would that be caused to leave your job? Very interesting for public officials. I'd like to know what you guys think about that. I almost think it's a good thing, but is it too intrusive? I don't know. Pre-trial release and detention implements changes to Florida's bail and pre-trial detention systems, tightens pre-trial release options for certain felony offenders based on their criminal history. Transportation, um, the move over law. So if someone's, you know, if a cop pulls someone over on the side of the road and let's say it's a three lane highway and they're on the highway and they're on the right side, right shoulder, you either need to slow down 20 miles per hour um, from the speed limit, or you need to move over into the next lane so that that car and the cop are protected. Now, this is extending it to people who put on their hazard lights, all that kind of stuff. Um, state park campsite reservations. I really like this. I think this is cool. Um, so Florida residents can now book cabins, campsites, and RV spots at state parks a month before non-residents. So Florida residents can make reservations 11 months before, and non-Florida residents have to be 10 months out. Sheriffs providing child protective investigative services. Seven Florida counties, including Hillsborough, Manatee, Pasco, Pinellas, must transfer child protective investigations to the Florida Department of Child and Families, or DCF. Allow sheriff offices to transfer employees to DCF. So um, I think these are all bills that DeSantis pushed in. And you guys have heard me say this before, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of any politician at the end of the day, all these guys got ego problems, but, um, not a big fan of what a lot of the things that DeSantis has pushed, but there's some things, a lot of those things on that list I agree with, right? And there's gonna, that's, I guess that's part of it. It's a give and take, you know, I'm not saying I'm the moral compass of the world, but um, you know, there's some things I agree that he's done and, and some of those, some of those things I disagree with, right? So um, to make it, a, I feel like we need, we need to be able to vote on these kind of things. Like it's so simple now, just make it an app. Let, let us be able to say like, yay, nay, you know, um, but Government takes a while to catch up, right? And they ruin everything. Um, on to the next news story, guys. Any questions about that, fire them off below. Helps me in the algorithm, so you're doing me a favor. Oh, that's the same one. Now, this is also important. If you're not already living here in Florida, um, we all hear about property insurance being expensive in Florida, but insurance in general is expensive, right? Car insurance in Florida is costliest in the country. What's driving the sky high rates? Now, I have actually did a video on this prior. And the main reason that, that was stated before was because there's a ton of uninsured motorists here in Florida. I don't know how people get away with it. Like, I, I get I, I get pulled over for nothing. And my wife even like thinks it's hilarious because I drive pretty much the best that you can, you know, in terms of following the laws. Yeah. Do I speed go five, 10 miles per hour over the speed limit? Yeah. But who doesn't. Right. Um, but I still get pulled over for like little nonsensical things. and I, It drives me insane. So I follow the rules to a T anymore. But uh, Mark Freelander says Florida drivers are now paying an average of $3,183 per year. That's 58% higher than the national average. So um, my wife and I, uh, we're on a policy together. Obviously we pay about $200 a month. I have a 99 Tacoma. She's got a 2022 or 2023 Toyota RAV4. Um, and we pay about $200 a month. So um, we're, I guess we're pretty low below the average there. Um, but we're also here in Northeastern Florida. So I imagine in Tampa, Orlando, and in Miami, the, the premiums probably jack that up a good bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so a lot of people are seeing a ton of increases, right? A, a lot of businesses are seeing increases. And the problem is, is that uh, what they, they attribute it to is insurance fraud, vehicle thefts, and flooded out cars. Um, and a lot of that is based off of the insurance. Um, so here in Florida, if a, you know, a rock cracks your windshield or whatever, that can actually be covered under your insurance policy. So it's free, essentially, for you to have it taken care of. 
but your insurance company has to pay the bill. So what happens is, is the people replacing windshields will charge your insurance company through the nose, thus making it more expensive for insurance. So that's a big problem. And the insurance company could take it to, um, you know, to court, but then they're going to spend money on that, which doesn't make sense. So they're going to spend money and time doing that opposed to just paying the bill. Same thing that's going on with property insurance seems to be going on with car insurance. And these lawsuits are no different, right? So either way, it's going to come out of your pocket, you know, maybe, and it's something I had a conversation with, with someone who was trying to move from South Florida is if it was actually a better move for him, you know, uh, in terms of the cost. And when we looked at like, all right, you're going to pay an HOA, a CDD and your property insurance, it was pretty much a wash for him. He wasn't saving any money, even though he was coming from, he lived in this house for a long time, coming from an $800,000 house, going to a $600,000 house. It, it pretty much didn't make much sense for him. The only reason he'd want to move was because his daughter lives up here. So such is life, right? Um, just part of living in the state. Now we're, the state's growing like crazy. So let's get on to the next news story, guys. I only have a couple more for you. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Hope you guys have a good holiday. Hope you had a good holiday. Um, hope you have a good new year. Got some plans for that. Of course, they got fireworks over the fort. They got fireworks over uh, St. Augustine Beach. So you can check that out. Uh, I think they start at eight o'clock. St. John's County approves $191 million State Road 207 water reclamation facility. Um, bah, 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 where do I want to see? Bah, bah. This project will provide an advanced wastewater facility that collects and cleanses water to be reused for lawn irrigation. Recycled water is part of the county's plan to be more sustainable, diversify its water sources, and protect the environment. Currently, the county recycles 56% of all wastewater treatment uh, flows for beneficial purposes to replace the use of traditional freshwater supplies. Now, this is going to be off of State Road 207, which is growing um, here in St. Augustine. Really, we're seeing a lot of development north of uh, 16 north of um, World Golf Village, but now we're starting to see a little bit more development. And I think that's because they are planning to build a lot more right off 207, right off 16, uh, right off 206, because that's where a lot of the arable land is. And it's as you go further north in the county, more expensive it gets. As you're further south, the cheaper it gets, especially when it comes down to land. So they're looking to have this completed by May 2026. Um, and I think that's a good thing. Um, I just had a conversation with someone about you know, if there's any restrictions on utilities or, um, you know, water or anything. And, and they do have a restriction on when you can water uh, your lawn in, in St. Augustine. I don't know how they check it or how, how that's even looked at. You get a water bill and it's all in one bill. Um, but I water my grass whenever. I've never had a problem. Um, maybe I shouldn't say that live here if you're working at the city. Allegedly, that's what I do, right? I don't, I follow the rules. Um, so... <laughs> Either way, guys, um, let's head on to the next news story here. Um, got two more for you. And these are two good ones. Honestly, these are really good ones. Um, so, oh, yeah, blank, nothing. Cool. That's that's good. There we go. JIA's permit to build new gates, more flights under city review. So Jacksonville, Jacksonville International Airport is a small airport. It only really has, I think, a, B, and C concourse, right? And they have a couple of gates on there. It's very easy to get around into. You're in and out. Like, I mean, I'm the worst with that. My wife, she hates it. She wants to show up, you know, two, three hours early where I'm like, no, I'm going to get there an hour early and hope for the best. Um, so I'll, I, a lot of times I, walk, I get there like an hour, 30 minutes before, you know, it starts boarding. I walk through the gate in about 20 minutes. I walk right on the plane. And that's something that's really fantastic. You know, living here in Jacksonville and being able to get around places, um, but they're going to be adding another concourse. It's a $300 million project. It's going to add, um, I think six more gates. Um, I believe this is what it said, uh, add six gate and two security lines to the airport. Now, of course the locals don't like it. More gates means more airlines means more. All right. I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. Um, where are the locals? Yeah, so it's our local city, so it's not like I want a huge airport where I have to get there two hours early. It's always nice to just be able to get there an hour early, and I agree with her, right? But Jacksonville is a growing city, and unfortunately, things don't go by my convenience, right? It's by what's convenience for the, the, the general population, right? So they're going to be building that. It's expected to be completed by 2026, and of course, um, you know, the 
<laughs> JIA says more gates means more airlines, which means more options for travelers, which I think is good for us. Uh, it might mean more people moving here, but that's going to happen anyway with or without a larger airport. So, and that's the truth, right? Um, the airport has nothing to do really with people moving here because we also have Orlando International Airport, which is only like two to three hours away for most people living in Jacksonville. And St. John's County is two hours. Um, so uh, it's you still have tons of options out of there, right? And that's a massive airport. But having Jacksonville right up there, being able to take a flight out of there is, is super convenient. And it's only an hour away from my house. Um, so I'm glad that's going to happen. Yeah, I got to leave a little bit earlier. Such is life. Such is life, guys. Um, but let me head on to the next news story. Then we'll get into the Q&A. So if you do have any questions, fire them off below. I'll get to answer them the best that I can. Um, I don't pretend to know everything. If I don't know it, I'll figure it out. Um, so this is something that we've talked about in the past, right? We talked about St. Augustine looking to add a railway station, um, you know, at downtown St. Augustine, then having a couple of stops going all the way up to Jacksonville. But um, what I saw here today is the U.S. Department of Transportation Federal Railroad Administration has awarded $8.2 billion to construct 10 passenger rail projects across the country. This follows $16.4 billion investment announced last month for 25 rail projects of national significance along America's busiest rail corridors. So as you can see here, they have a couple of different um, corridor ID selections. We're more concerned about this one, right? So this is gonna be Jacksonville, this is gonna be Orlando, crossing through Orlando to Tampa, and then we got Miami down here, right? And that would follow along with what Jacksonville and St. Augustine already wanna do by putting a railway station in here. So no one's saying that like, yeah, this is definitely happening, but it seems to be that there are a ton of hints that are saying like, hey, there's, there's some money set aside from this. And also like, I'm from the Northeast, from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Getting around on a train is, is very simple to do. Um, and, you know, even if it's, if you're in, you know, in New York, of course you have the subway. If you're in Philly, you have SEPTA, um, you have the L, um, you have Amtrak lines going everywhere. So it, it, public transportation here in, in Florida is just not a thing. You have your car and that's pretty much it and an Uber. And, you know, there's, there's a bus system in Jacksonville. How much it's really used, I don't know. Um, and there is a railway in Jacksonville, also same thing. I don't really think it's used that much. But if you're if you're opening up the playbook a little bit, making it easier to go from Jacksonville to Orlando to, you know, where you don't got to drive and pay for parking and all that kind of stuff, want to go down to Miami, it makes it very easy. So I'm definitely a big fan of that. I hope they do that um, because having a railway station would increase my property value right out here. Um, but also I think it adds something to St. Augustine, where people need to commute to Jacksonville for work, they can easily do that, right? And I'm, I think that's what we really need to focus on is is, is transportation for the, the mass majority of people as Florida grows, as St. Augustine grows. So I think that's probably going to happen. We'll see. A lot of money on the table there. But uh, let's see here. I got some comments here. Ba, 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 ba. Ortiz. Do you know anything about the new sewer system that will be installed around West Augustine? We definitely want to get rid of that hump in our backyard. I do not know about the new sewer system in West Augustine. I haven't heard about any projects about that. Um, I'll look into it, though. Uh, they have a development tracker on St. John's County. I didn't see it on there. So I'll double check into that and... Uh, if they do have that coming, then that would be another reason to move into West Augustine. Um, but I totally hear you. Actually, I have a septic as well, but when they uh, put my septic in, it's in the front of my house. They, they buried it flat with um, flat with the land, uh, which I love. And also now, if you're building a new house, a lot of times the county is requiring you to put the septic in front of the house. So if they do put a sewer system in, then you can just, you know, essentially the septic tank acts as like a, a pep tank before it goes into the sewer system. So another filtration before it heads into the, the county sewer. So um, I think that's, it's, you know, just bringing it up here and me guessing without looking at it, it's bound to happen uh, just because of the growth of West Augustine. Um, so yeah, I'll look into it. I'll let you know, Ortiz, I'm not hundred percent sure, but glad to, I guess you're living here in West Augustine. What's up neighbor, hope all is well. Um, let's see, Deborah Tom Thompson. Always educating. You know, I, I try. I think that's, you know, as a realtor, you know, I I want to give information to people so they can make a decision. You know, it's 
I, I think people, it's so funny. People call realtors greedy and everything. And like, oh, you just want to make a sale? Like, yeah, of course I want to make a sale, right? Like that's my job. Like that's, that's literally what I do. So, and that's how I get paid, right? But like, I'm not gonna, I don't want to make a sale to someone. And then like, they're like, oh, Thomas, you didn't tell us about this. You didn't tell us about that. It's like, I, I, you know, I'm trying to tell you all the information I can, right? Now, are there gonna be some things that are missed? Like hundred percent, I don't know everything, but uh, I, I think that's it. You, I give you the education, so you, I give you the information so you can make an educated decision. That's that's my whole goal here, guys. And I'm glad that you see that. Mike and Deb, you guys are the best. Appreciate you. We got CB back. CB back. Let's go. What areas do you see as top growth areas in the county for the coming year? That's a good question. Um, so it really depends, like, in terms of growth. Like, are you talking about in terms of appreciation of homes? Are you talking about population? Um, what, like, what's the coolest things I see coming along? Um, I, as I've talked about before, I really think that West Augustine, which is why I bought a house here, I think that I think this neighborhood's on the way. Um, if you if you look at the history of St. Augustine, and if you're familiar with St. Augustine at all, downtown St. Augustine um, had Lincolnville. Lincolnville is south of King Street, right? So you're 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 looking at downtown St. Augustine, the historic district. If you go south of King Street, north of King Street is like where St. George Street is, where the fort is. That whole area was an area where people didn't want to live at one point. Now that is one of the areas where people definitely want to live. It has all these old historic homes, super beautiful. Um, and you're seeing homes in there. I think the average sale price there is like 450, but you can see homes up there go for 3 million. You can see homes up there 800. Um, and you're also right next to downtown. It's pretty much the only walkable area um, aside from St. Augustine Beach is going to be downtown St. Augustine. But then you have West Augustine. Or West Augustine, like if you if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen me talk about this. Like West Augustine, all the businesses that have popped up within the past year, I know of. So let me just list off a couple. Um, Muggsy's Bar is opening. They're putting a parking garage right at the corner of King and US One, right? So that's going to bring people. They're also supposed to be building a walkover from the west side over to downtown, so people don't have to worry about the light. They just walk right over. Um, parking garage. Uh, going there. Um, Sailbird Distillery just opened. Um, they have uh, Buena, Adna, Ad, Buena, Buena Adna, which just opened. The West Egg, great breakfast spot. Um, Serenity Yoga. Maracuya, which is a little coffee spot. Um, then they're also putting in a landscape supply store. They're putting in a, uh, I don't know how this is going to work or how well this will do. I think it'll be cool. Um, but I guess there's a big need for bonsai trees here and they're, they're putting that right on West King. It's going to be a bonsai garden. Um, so where you can go and buy bonsai trees and it's like going to be this expansive thing. Um, that's, that's in the plans right now. Um, there's a couple buildings that are being renovated for Flagler college housing. Um, yeah, they just have a ton of stuff going on here and I, I don't know anywhere, especially when you're talking about walkability to downtown St. Augustine. For me, that's that's awesome. I'm a mile from downtown. I can literally walk downtown in 20 minutes, right? And to me, that's not a lot. You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a walker, so that's not a big deal. But you can ride your bike there in 5, 10, not a problem. I take runs down there. I go I run the waterfront. Um, and I'm, on, I'm convenient to everything in St. Augustine. I'm 15 minutes to the beach and 15 minutes to the amphitheater, 5 minutes to downtown if I'm driving. Um, and then I'm close to 95, too. So I can get out on homes. I get to 95 in 7 minutes. So... Uh, I think it's a fantastic location. Um, other areas of growth that you might want to look at. I mean, really like the, the northwestern part of St. John's County is blowing up like crazy. Uh, that's where you're going to be able to find, especially like if you're on the northeastern part of St. John's County. So we're talking about like Nocatee, Beach Walk. Prices over there are going to be a little bit more expensive than the west side of 95. Um, so that area, they're building more and more. Uh, Silverleaf, I think, is a great little community there. They're they have a long-term plan there. So like, if you're trying to see what Silverleaf could look like in the future, Nocatee, I think is a good example of that. And the difference is, is that Nocatee is mature, right? So you drive through those neighborhoods and like all the trees are grown, it's, it's beautiful. It's really well manicured. Whereas like Silverleaf is a construction zone right now and all the trees are like, you know, as tall as me and they're like little skinny things, but they will eventually be bigger trees that kind of canopy the roads and everything like that. Um, so I think that's a great little neighborhood. Um, to look into and, and the prices in Silverleaf versus a lot of the new construction communities around are great right and you still get 
all of the benefits of living in that immediate area. Like, so if you're looking at a Shearwater or river town, you can still go to Silverleaf and pretty much get everything the same um, for a, a lot less of a price. And they're also going to be building 15,000 homes in there. So um, if our county keeps going the way it's going, if homes prices keep appreciating, then that could be an area where um, you could get in now and you'll be good later. So great question, CB. Hope that answered it. Bitey Cats back, better travel hub would be fantastic. Yeah, I mean, we don't have any public transportation here. It's very, it, it, you, if you don't have a car, and, and we just talked about car insurance, if you don't have a car, then you're, you're SOL. You don't have, you know, you're not getting around here very easily. So I think having uh, that parking garage there, having a shuttle to downtown, and that parking garage in tandem being a railroad, railroad station that connects to that master plan that's going to connect Jacksonville, Orlando, Miami, and Tampa. That's fantastic for our area. You know, that, that opens up tourism to people coming out of those areas to come up here too. So, coolest name in the world's back, Apollo Andrade. Some reports show Florida homeowners insurance is up by 40%. Some senior citizens reported started moving to other southeast states such as Tennessee due to the insurance costs. Thousand percent. That that's definitely happened, right? Um, and that's because they're all on fixed incomes, and maybe they paid off their place, but then they got an insurance premium hike, and yeah, it makes it totally unaffordable for them to live here. So you're seeing them go to Tennessee. You're seeing them go to South South Carolina. It's crazy how how cheap homes are out there. It's, it really is. I don't know. You know, it's aside, aside from Charleston. I don't really know what the major areas are. I guess Spartansburg, um, South Carolina, um, but. Uh, I see some of my friends that do real estate up there. They actually have a, a living in South Carolina YouTube channel, uh, Bob Tompkins. Um, and man, the homes that you get for 300000 out there, they're, they're a lot more of a home than you get for here. So I definitely understand that. They're also still getting the benefits. If you're up in South Carolina, you're still getting a little bit of chill. You know, you're getting a little bit of chill, but you're, you're, you're not getting snow and everything. So I could see that. Also, I think Tennessee, like their taxes are like, I was talking to one of my, <coughs> excuse me, one of my buyers about the taxes he was paying on like eight acres and he said like a million dollar house. I want to say it was like, I was something like ridiculous where I couldn't even believe how cheap it was. I, I, I want to say it was like 800 bucks, something like that. So cheaper living. Yeah. And when you're not making any money, when you're on a fixed income, you got to look at that kind of stuff. Right. And also on the same note, right. Their homeowner's insurance went up by 40%, but their property value, let's say all these guys bought property 10 years ago. Well, they're probably up a hundred percent on their property value. So, they're going to sell, take their money and go somewhere else. So it's almost like you're living up in New York. You got a house, you sell it up in New York, you come down here, you buy two houses. They're doing the same thing, just moving to South Carolina. So such is life, right? But great, uh, great comment there. Thank you. With the increasing price of insurance and more extreme weather in the cost in the coast of Florida, it's amazing to see all the new luxury home construction on Ponte Vedra Beach. Yeah, well, we also knock on some wood. We also don't get hit nearly as hard. I mean, if you look at like a hurricane map, you can just do this on your own. Um, if you look at a hurricane map, really northeastern Florida, we've been extremely lucky is probably the best word to use because um, it's bound to happen. We're going to get hit sometime, right? Um, but also, if you're looking at Ponte Vedra Beach, man, those houses are so high. They're, they're, they're built so high up, it's crazy. Like, I mean, they're probably 20 feet above the dunes, you know? And it, it seems like there's a natural hill. I mean, if we're thinking of the same places, because I there's, there's one side where, like, if you're on the east side of A1, so you're on A1A, you're going north. The east side of A1A, the houses are like 20, if you, you go up a hill to get up to the houses. And we're talking like five, six, seven. Ed Milet bought a $16 million house over there just recently. Um, and then just right over the other side of A1A, you have almost like the opposite. So it's like A1A is here, the other houses on the east side are here, and then the west side where they're building million dollar houses as well of A1A. And they're, we're talking right on A1A. Like they're not. That's, that's the road. Um, they're about 10, 20 feet down, but then it continues to slope down, you know, through the marshlands and everything. So uh, I also think that's a that's a sign of what's going on with Duval County and St. John's County. St. John's County is one of the wealthiest counties in Florida. Um, Duval County is growing like crazy. And it's it's been waiting for this growth for a long time. Um, so I think that's just money moving. Right. And people making decisions on like, hey, I think this could be, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe like a Miami in the 80s type of situation. Right. Where it's like you bought then. No one wanted to live there then. But now everyone wants to live in Miami. Right. So uh, maybe that's what Jackson will be in 20 years. Who knows? 
think I think it's really going to go up. Honestly, I think Duval County is pretty cool. Jacksonville, Jack's Beach is awesome, really. Um, Paulo again, back at it. What are your thoughts on how affordability and livability will be near the coast of Florida ten years from now? Should buying near the beach or flood zones today be avoided? Um, it just depends on your lifestyle, you know. Um, Let's answer the first question, affordability and livability near the coast of Florida. Well, there's only so much you can build in reality, right? Uh, because there's just not that much land. And typically when you have more expensive land, they're not allowing uh, just because residents get extremely worked up. And I've covered this before, then not in my backyard type of thing. Like, so if you have a million dollar house, you don't want an apartment complex going up right next to your house. It's just, that's what happens. And then those people get together and they're like, no, this isn't happening. We pay all these taxes. We don't want this. So in those areas, there's only so many people that can fit in that section. Like, so Flagler Beach, fantastic example. You really can't build anymore in Flagler Beach. It's pretty much all built out. So there, there's only so much more people that can live there, right? Um, which also then affects the affordability. Um, the affordability, I think, you know, I was talking to my buddy who lives in Tampa and um, I had someone that was interested in a million dollar house and they ended up passing on it right on the ocean. It was for 1.3 million um, it was right oceanfront and now the house needed a lot of work um but it was still a beautiful home i think it was it was a multi-family so it had like a little condo in the bottom that your little apartment in the bottom that you could rent out and then the top the two floors above it uh, i want to say it was like 2500 or 3000 square feet direct oceanfront he was like a million three for direct oceanfront that's crazy like how is that how's that a thing out here in, in my area he's in sarasota it's like it'd be like double that triple that so um Maybe we're at the bottom. Maybe we're not. Um, I do know 60% of transactions over a million dollars have been all cash, which is crazy. Um, so uh, let's go to the next question now. We'll be okay. So affordability and livability near, will be near the coast 10 years from now. Should buying near the beach or flood zones stay be avoided? I mean, that's it's one of those things like, uh, you know, they've been talking about climate change for my entire life, I'm 32 years old. And the climate does change. That's what happens, right? Seasonality changes. Um, the earth goes through global cooling and global warming phases. I don't know anything. I'm, I'm an idiot compared to these guys, right? So is it potential that in 10 years that the water level rises again because the polar ice caps melt? And then those areas are less and less areas. They're more, they're more waterways, 100%. That's possible. I don't know. That's that's a hard question to answer. Um, should buying near beach or flood zones? To, well, and one thing, everything in Florida is in a flood zone, right? So flood zone X is where that's like the hundred year flood where that could happen. Um, acts of God almost. Um, it just depends on what you want. You know, living on the beach, living on the intercoastal, you should expect to have your house flood. That's going to happen. If you're going to hit with a hurricane like this past couple of years, we haven't even really got hit with heavy hurricanes, but Hurricanes came, like category one, two hurricanes came at the king tide. So in the middle of September, the tides are really at their highest. And then you have water just dumping on top of that. And I mean, my grandma, and just, just this is anecdotal, right? But um, my grandma owns a double wide trailer on the intercoastal. My great grandparents owned a double wide trailer that was on the intercoastal. She's literally intercoastal front. She, she faces the water um, and they've never had it float away. And so that's back since 1977, I think. They bought the, the property originally, put a double wide trailer on it. My grandparents put a new double wide trailer in 1998. It's still sitting there, hasn't blown away yet. They don't even carry flood insurance because it's paid off. They're like, hey, it floats away, we'll put another one on. So <laughs> just, just how people work here, I guess. Paulo, thank you for your questions. Brian, how about retail growth? I've heard numbers of large retail developments just south of Rivertown. Have you heard any about new retail development? Um, yeah. So if you look at nationally, commercial developments get hit hard, right? Um, commercial buildings, commercial loans, we're going to see the commercial real estate in a lot of places take a huge hit, right? Here in St. John's County, retail development, uh, like we're thinking about like shopping, you know, getting your nails done, stuff like that. Not sure if you're doing any of that, Brian. Um, but uh, here in Northeastern Florida, it's, it's pretty staggering how quickly a lot of these places lease out and they're not cheap. They're not cheap at all. Um, I'm actually looking at a couple places for another person. Um, and we're looking at like 20 to 20, 20 to $30 a square foot, you know? And if you're looking at that, like just easy math here, 
twenty dollars a square foot times ten thousand square feet. That's a lot of rent for the year. Two hundred thousand dollars a year for your your rent, right? And that's not including the core factor, which is, you know, another thing. Either way, um, so I ha south of Rivertown. I mean, they are building smaller retail developments, but nothing massive like a Durban Park or um, you know, they have the shops at Rivertown, which is, you know what it is. It's very small. It's not very big. Um, so I haven't heard of anything new that way. But if I do hear something, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know on here. I don't have your contact information, but if you want to text me, um, you can. Um, but yeah, I have not heard of anything about that but retail growth I think there's a lot of room for it because there's not everything here you see is brand new there especially in your area there's nothing out there really like and well for Rivertown is a little further west um, but like you're talking about like Shearwater Silverleaf um, World Golf area a lot of before they called that like a food desert right because there was like nowhere to go to eat nowhere to do anything but now you're seeing on 210 you're seeing all these commercial spaces popping up and they're fully they're packed every time I go into a restaurant over there went to al dente um which is by like ember and iron if you're familiar and great italian restaurant very very good but it was packed it was packed every place i go to is packed um which is in the west part of st john's county you're not really there's no tourism out there right it's just people that live there but it's because the options are limited but brian thank you so much for your question um i'll stay on top of that for sure ortiz thanks for the info and yes we are neighbors we're going to need your services soon Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I love to be able to help anywhere I can. You know, if you guys are thinking about buying more property, selling property, whatever, I'm here to help. Um, you know, West King, I think is, uh, there's definitely some issues in West King and I have no problem saying this cause I do it. I pick up trash twice a week and I pick up trash in the same exact freaking spot twice a week. And it drives me nuts. People throw trash everywhere here. I hate it. Um, and it's getting to the point where I'm going to start saying stuff to people. I'm going to get myself in some trouble. Um, but I, I got to do it because it, it just drives me absolutely nuts. Like there's garbage cans everywhere. Just throw it in the garbage. Literally, you go to a garbage can on King Street and there's garbage surrounding it. It's like it's right there. It's right. Just, you, you, you know, you shoot the J, you miss it, put it in the trash can, figure it out. But either way. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I love West King. And like the, the walkability of West King is just it's going up definitely going up. Um, I live right across the street pretty much from, if you know, where the seafood boil is, where they have the crispy crunch chicken, there's a little corner store there. I love that. I love that. I can go to the corner store. I can grab a, you know, some chips or a drink or whatever. They have like a little station in there where if you want to get some chicken, some fries, some mozzarella sticks, whatever, it's all right there. And they also have the seafood boil place there too. Then, um, oh, that's another place that's opening. Uh, there's a spot right before you get to the train tracks on the right side. It's been vacant for a while, vacant for a while. It's place. They're opening another barbecue place there. I talked to the woman who owns that place or, or is leasing that place. Um, she says they're expecting to open at the beginning of next year. So should have another barbecue spot over there. I'm, I'm so for it. I, I really am. So I think West Augustine is a, is the best bet. Um, which is why I bought here, you know, so I put my money where my mouth is. Um, but you're also seeing new construction go up all over West Augustine and Ortiz. You can probably, um, you can probably chime in here. Let me know, if, you know, I'm not, I'm not bullshitting people here, but like you go on pretty much every street in West Augustine, you're going to see a new build, new build over here, new build over here, new build over there. And that's because buying property, you can get a, a piece of land here for 40 to $60,000. Right. And then you can build the house that you want. So, but you're going to have a septic tank more than likely. Right. So, um, I like West Augustine. I think it provides like all the convenience of, you know, downtown essentially without being downtown. You're not having to deal with that hassle. Um, but you're also so close. I can go to Volano Beach. I can go to St. Augustine Beach. I can go to the amphitheater. The amphitheater took me 12 minutes to get there um, when we went to go see a show. So I could ride my bike there if I wanted to. And I would, but my wife won't. So we'll drive. But either way, guys, uh, that's going to be it for today. I appreciate all you guys and your interactions here. Really, I, I love it. This makes doing the news stories or whatever, honestly, it helps me um, just because I like to be informed on everything. And I hope it helps you guys. But the questions and everything, this is actually what I enjoy about these this whole process. And I say it every time, like, hey, it's going to be a short one today. But then we get into the questions and then we're, we're, we're already an hour in. So um, that being said, guys, let's wrap it up here. 
Um, if you do need any help, if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest here in Northeastern Florida, I'd love to be able to help out. I'm not pressuring anyone to do anything. Um, I try to give you the information so you can make an educated decision on what you want to do. Uh, so if you are looking to do that, that's my contact info information below. You can uh, also schedule and it, it'll take a little bit for it to populate on this video, but I'll put a Calendly link in this video if you want to schedule an appointment with me. It's free. You have a consultation, questions, whatever that is. You can text me, call me, email me. I'll get back to you. All right, guys. Oh, man, I got a couple more comments. All right, let me see here. Okay, thanks for the live. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Apollo. West West is the best for sure. They're building everywhere for two years in a row now. Yeah, and that's a fact. And I think you, I think, you know what? I titled, I think I put the title in the thumbnail, Best in the West. Um, so maybe you watch that video. I don't know. Happy New Year to you guys. Happy New Year, CB. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. Until next week, guys. Um, yeah, next week we'll be able to do it. The following week, I'm going to be in Puerto Rico, I believe. Um, so I probably won't do a live stream. I might just, just to stay consistent with stuff, but either way, guys, appreciate you being here tonight. Have a great night and I'll see you next week.